Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything? Everything you do is an A to B conversation and the government should see their way out of it. Create true free markets by adopting the BIPCOT No Government License. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows use or modification of any product, service, or software except by governments or government agents. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org. Welcome to Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 59. So we're going to go with Jeremy for the BIPCOT NoGov license. Yes, as always, the Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by the BIPCOT No Government license. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. So today we're joined uh, by Merrick and Jonathan from the Radical Logic podcast, which is also on the Seeds of Liberty podcast. Um, and uh, we're going to talk about, you know, we'll start with the, um, the Harriet Tubman uh, replacing uh, was it Andrew Jackson on the $20 bill. And, uh, not why replacing him. Not replacing him? He's just being relocated, that's all. <laughs> oh, oh! See, you, you see how much I pay attention to this stuff. <laughs> That's what you want to talk about. That's... She's joining him, and that irony is not lost yes, on me. Yes, I know. Mm. I believe I made a meme to that effect. Right, right, and uh, and and what is the significance of that? Because, uh, of course, an abolitionist on a Federal Reserve note that's you know printed and owned by a central bank is, you know, contains no no symbolism whatsoever, right? <laughs> What could possibly go wrong? Uh, well, first of all, thank you guys for filling in for Dave. Um, this is uh, another good week for me. I don't have to listen to him talk, so uh, <laughs> that's always a plus. It's always a plus. And uh, I always love being be, having the opportunity to be fake Dave, so I can do my <laughs> no, my fake Dave. No, no, no. no there's no need to see. Everybody says that. No, no. I I just want no Dave. That's okay. It's much better. Much better. Yeah. I'm just no, kidding, man. Just I'm kidding, Dave. I, I love I, you. I'm always I'm working just... on it. You know, roll tide. See. <laughs> Fascist, fascist. fascist yeah. <laughs> you guys say fascist a lot. We haven't heard that in a while. <laughs> it's been quiet. You've been quiet on that front. <laughs> but actually, you know, I, I remember when they they started doing the hundred dollar bill, you know, with the with the colors and the you know the the special stripe, and people made a big deal about that. And uh, and it's just it's just amazing how it's like you know the fact that these things are made like mass produced on a printer or even now you know just printed on a screen, you know, at will, <laughs> uh, that kind of escapes people. And, and, and like, you know, what really catches their eye is colors and a, a different face. <laughs> it's funny that people, they get the, you know, I guess it's the bread and circus, right? They, bread and they circuses, get... man. You took the words out of my mouth. I kind of enjoy but... the fact that it's looking more and more like Monopoly money. <laughs> yeah, I, I said the same thing when they started doing the color stuff. It was, I mean, and there, and I remember people making memes about that and showing that, like, you know, the different one, the different ways they colored the bills, kind of lined up with the Monopoly colors, which is yeah, could, <laughs> cannot can just it can't be a coincidence. There's just no way. <laughs> but I mean, that that's one thing because at least at least during that changeover, they could they could fly under the radar of security. You know, they were trying to make the they were trying to make the cash more secure, more hard to counterfeit. Which, of course, in itself is just a joke because that's exactly yeah. it's exactly what they're doing. They just use a different word. You know, they 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 call it printing money, but no, it's just counterfeiting. Um, but they you know so they so but at least they had that to hide behind. So any discussion about that usually was just. About, purely about aesthetics people are just like oh look you know looks looks better looks worse whatever this one is more that you know it it really caused an uproar because people want to think they know about history and mouth off a lot about it apparently but i i mean i said it, it, it all it was was a pure distraction because and, you know it, it's it's just now this now it's just a distraction to keep people from re recognizing that the money's not actually worth anything so it doesn't really matter whose face is on it. Um, but the terrible irony about this one, like I said, the, all the headlines, even like the big, um, you know, the, the, the MSN, all of, all of the headlines all said she's replacing him, she's replacing him, she's replacing him, she's replacing him. 
And uh, I think it was James Babb that I was talking to who said he uh, it might have been on the it might have been one night on the fiends that he said no there's it's, he is he, oh, it was him and he said I went to the treasury site and it says on the tr- it says directly on the actual treasury website no he's just getting moved to the back so it's not a re- it, he's not getting Andrew Jackson isn't getting replaced he's getting relocated. But everybody, he's in wit pro. Yeah, <laughs> but but so but everybody everybody made a big deal of it. Yes, so she's now the face of it. But now the irony is even worse because, like we said at the, at the beginning, you have now and you have the most recognizable U.S. Uh, abolitionist. I mean, in our circles, it's usually uh, Lysander Spooner. But for the average person, Harriet Tubman is the person they recognize when they think of abolition as the abolitionist. That's who they think of. So the most recognizable face of the abolitionist movement in America is now sharing a piece of paper from the Federal Reserve, which keeps everybody enslaved with their theft of, ins- of inflation and everything else. And on the back side of that bill is going to be a former slave owner who who stood up to the federal to the to the to the you know the national bank at the time, but in every other way was a horrible, horrible, horrible human being. I mean, so so, the, the, so let me the, hold on, let me get this straight. Are you, are, are you telling me that Harriet Tubman just pulled a Rosa Parks on Andrew Jackson? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Get to the back. Get to the back of the bill. Send it to the back of the back of the bill, man. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Which it's funny you mentioned that about the you know opposing the the bank, but even the way that he did it was completely unconstitutional, just like everything else that he did. Yeah. It was that old uh, you know the ends justify the means, yep. and that's the argument that every statist will make for every essential little program that they have. Well, you know, the ends. It's all about the ends. Oh, and the other thing I keep hearing is that Harriet Tubman was a Republican, don't you know? Oh, my God. <laughs> well, a- a- everybody well, – again, that, that, that's why stuff like this is actually, like, one of the p- perfect distractions for, uh, for, for the status at large because they all jump in and, and all want to claim, like, ownership over this person. Like, I remember it happening with, with Lincoln again a couple of uh, – like, last year, the year before. Tyrant. You know, was that? I said tyrant. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> but uh, there was, I remember there was some uh, some big hubbub about they were removing his name from some school somewhere, and, like, everybody came out, and it was like, the Republicans never got, no, he's this, no, he's this. It's like, uh, he was just a bad guy, so why anybody would want to claim over ownership over him, I have no idea. But that's what it does in this situation. Like, they're all, like, the, the Republicans, yeah, the memes came flying out of everywhere. Oh, you know. The, the slave-owning Democrat was replaced by the gun-toting, law-breaking Republican. It's like, well... Where does this even come from? I mean, I'd like to see a copy of her voting record. Yeah, she, she, <laughs> she, was, a law, she was a law-breaker. Yeah, that part is true. I, did she carry a gun all the time? I don't actually know. I think there's supposedly pictures of her with one, so okay, she may have been a gun-toting. But yeah, a Republican? Yeah, I don't... <laughs> I don't. Why would she be siding with the with with? Because the Republicans at that time were only, what, just brand you know, basically brand new. The actual Republican Party, right? Because didn't Link, Lincoln actually was their first candidate, and they'd only been officially around for like ten years before that, I think, when he got in. I think that's how the timeline goes. Um, that's right. So she was, uh, what she 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 was automatically going with the guy who is like. During his first inaugural address, didn't he talk about it? Or in speeches before that, he talked about how he wanted to send all the blacks back to Africa. Um, oh, sure. And, he was a hor- and, horrible racist yeah. and also a supporter of the fugitive slave laws. Exactly. So you really think she was on his side? I, I somehow am yeah, no. thinking not. <laughs> um, but again, probably, it, probably it's, not. But again, it, it's the perfect distraction. And just like so many other things when it comes to the state, it doesn't matter whether it was it, whether this was done by design or, or just as happenstance. The result's the same. <laughs> Everybody gets up in arms and they show passion over the most <laughs> idiotic things. <laughs> instead yeah, of I mean, that was the point that I was making is that you had you had the proper tyrant on your fiat currency. That's appropriate. You know, you should put Washington on those things. You should put Lincoln. You should put Jackson as as a reminder of that Federal Reserve note, you know, fractional reserve banking. What? 
Yeah, they, mm -hmm. those guys should represent that. Don't put the good people on there. <laughs> it's just a distraction. You know, instead of paying a, uh, paying attention to that, why don't you pay attention to the fact that it no longer says, what did it used to say, silver dollar certificate or something like that? Yeah, silver, well, silver, silver yeah. certificate. Yeah, I know. Well, silver certificate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it used to be yeah. redeemable in gold. Yeah, there yeah. you go. You know, <laughs> it used to be like, uh, what is it, uh, uh, twenty twenty dollars uh, equal one ounce of gold. Yep. Twenty dollars, mm -hmm. yeah, one ounce of gold, and then then it got devalued to fifty, and then yeah. yeah. <laughs> but now but, it's uh, redeemable in your grandchildren's future. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it reminds me of a of a quote, uh, which is, um, "We revere the live conformists and the dead troublemakers." Right. So, if Harriet Tubman were alive today, would she be revered as she is? Um, now that she was dead, like you know, alive in the, in the 19th century, of course not, right? <laughs> the, the the people that are doing the exact same thing that she that she did are hated and scorned and yep. ostracized from society, right? Yeah. Hell, <laughs> so, I think we ought to put Bill Buford on the 20. <laughs> <laughs> well, that 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 would that would sully poor Bill. We don't want to do that to him. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, right. Maybe, maybe, maybe that would that would totally make him mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be good. You don't, you don't want to make Bill mad, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> but yeah, so so it, it's it's really amazing how you know these these people that that actually fought for true freedom in that time are now revered uh, by complete status um, for the weirdest reasons. And, uh, and they don't see the, the disconnect about how what they did today and what anarchists and volunteers are trying to do today is the, exactly the same. <laughs> right? Well, you just you know, c connect the dots a little bit. It's not exactly the same, but it's the same premise, yes. Well, yeah, she wasn't a volunteer, but she, but she was, uh, you know, basically following conscience, following, following morality. And, you know, she didn't make the, that jump, which is, you know, what most people have difficulty with is con conflating legality and morality. Right. I always have to you always have to separate that. I always have to separate that with people like like just today. I was I was with uh, these people and, you know, it's these homeschooling families and we were doing something. And one guy's like, is that legal? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what does it matter? <laughs> like like one of the kids uh, had an, oh, the, yeah, one of the kids had a knife. Right. And, and they were playing. The, and the, my oh, friend. Oh, no. Is, How dare guy, you, Danilo? Yeah, How dare you guy, let a child have a knife? What is wrong and with And this you? guy is like, is that, is that legal? Like, <laughs> and it's just funny. I find it so funny when people ask me that because I no longer think in those terms at all. You know, I don't even think what's legal anymore. I don't think wait about minute, that. It's funny that people still think about that. What, was, know, he, what was he asking about the legality about? I mean, was was <laughs> was like seriously? Like, what exactly was was the problem? Was it a machete or something? Like, what kind of knife did he have to worry about? Was if it was legal or not? Well, and just like a, like a I don't know um, a knife they use in the woods, you know, I guess for um, whittling, you know, stuff that you know, a small knife. But it's yeah. just it's just funny when people bring the legality of things up to me, and, and it really shows the appeal to authority that people always have regarding the state, you know, and and how we must always bow down, we must always consult the federal registry according to how we should act <laughs> and how we should behave. And then you ask, wait a minute, have you ever seen the federal registry? Do you know all the laws? Do you follow all the laws? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever read the book that Harvey Silverglate wrote? I mean, yeah, that, that one too. <laughs> yeah. You, you tell people that and then they, they find ways to justify that too. That that's no. what that's actually one of my favorites. You run into somebody who's like one of those the laws, the law type when it comes to something that you might have done, or if you want to discuss right. something somebody else has done that is you know who's been harassed and and or most likely caged for a victimless crime, and they want to go you know the law is the law, but then when you point this out to them, amazingly instead of that you know smacking him in the head and going oh they'll find a justification for it. well that's just a ridiculous law. <laughs> okay, no. See, right. <laughs> when I explained what was wrong with the victimless crime law that that, you know, that this actually is too, I gave you, you know, I gave you a reason. I showed you how this was like, you know, it was a violation of the consent of the individual because they weren't harming anybody. So and I apply that equally all over the place. You're picking and choosing. You still don't see where where there's a problem here, where there's a disconnect, where you're just going, "Oh no, it's that's wrong because I feel that it's wrong." So now we've gone beyond feeling, and now we've gone beyond the law, and now we've gone into your feelings. Do you not really understand how crazy you sound? <laughs> oh, no. 
aren't those the same people that are memorializing Harriet Tubman, who, if she had followed the law, nobody knew who the hell she is. Right. And there would be a thousand right. more dead slaves. Right. You know, it, it, I, I had this argument with somebody the other day. I said, do not conflate morality with legality. You know, mm -hmm. they're diametrically opposed in most cases, especially when you're talking about these stupid malum prohibitum laws. It's just an, a, an opinion backed up by a gun. I, I really get tired of talking about it because I sound like a freaking, you know, sounding <laughs> board just over and over, just I'm stuck on repeat, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah. uh, by that standard, the, the Romans that killed Jesus, that was legal. Right. You know, the fugitive <laughs> slaves laws were, were, were legal. Mm -hmm. Slavery was legal. All of that was legal. Is that, mm -hmm. should we just go back to that? Jim Crow, let's do that. That was legal, right? Yeah. No. No, because, <laughs> be, no, because they, they get up and they, somebody eventually got up in arms about those things and, most of them did it for the right reasons, but everybody who came after, it's all about feelings again. They're not, you know, even if even if they were on the right side of something like that, it's often not for the, I, guess, I don't want to say right reasons, but it's just for ridiculous reasons because they don't see the connection between, like, how this is just a pattern of everything else. Because, you know, like you said before, Danilo, they don't recognize how people like myself, like myself I, who I, I refer to myself as an abolitionist because that's really what I believe that I'm doing. I'm trying, you know. I know that's what I'm trying to do. I, I'm trying to abolish the state, so I am by definition an abolitionist. Um, but there is slavery involved too, so there, it's 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 an even stronger case for that. But people like us are often ridiculed, and we're not, you know, we're we're maligned, and we're not we're not taken seriously, just like people like her at the time. But sure. they don't they don't connect the dots. They people because on, I, I, you, you talk about being a broken record, Merrick. Merrick um, I've been saying this repeatedly. The the Twitter and meme generation, you know, that's what we live in, and that's what people's that's what people's attention spans have been brought down to. Well, that's <laughs> the reason I do the the memes and share memes to begin with, is because I have yes. to dumb it. I have to I have to Fisher Price everything and dumb it down. <laughs> <laughs> to to get a message nice. across and and I just accepted the fact that it's going to make me sound conceited and arrogant and everything else. I, I'm not the smartest guy in the room. I'm really not. You know, I'm average Joe, but if I want to communicate these messages to people, I really have to dumb it down. You know yeah. what our our saying on the podcast is people are stupid. <laughs> just have to you know, well, the thing is, if you talk if you talk to them on that level, then you're then you're you're talking over their head. If you dumb it down, then you're being condescending, <laughs> and you're talking <laughs> down to them. So you really can't win. Yeah, exactly. How do you win in that scenario? <laughs> and, and you're talking about the the laws and the feelings. They don't make the connection that that's how these stupid laws get put into place in the first place. Mm -hmm. Is that everybody got their feels hurt, <laughs> and so some politician. Who is a representative of this? These bunch of dumbasses said there ought to be a law. Yep. And now there's a law that that you know addresses your feels. And then you go, well, that's a stupid law. And they're like, no, you, if you don't want to get beat up by the police, just obey the law. You're missing yeah. the point, man. <laughs> it, so when we when I when I challenge the state and and you know the. Uh, you know the efficiency or the or the fact that it that it should exist at all the only argument most people have is about crimes that have a, a victim right so if you say that you're an anarchist and you don't think the state should exist or you don't think the law should exist you know the laws in, in the sense that uh, you know monopolistic law then they say well what if you're in a dark alley and you know a guy comes you know comes with a knife and or a woman's getting raped or so all vic all crimes with the victim like nobody would say well what if Somebody has a transaction and nobody's there to tax it. <laughs> you, never, you never hear. You never hear. The Actually, victim, the you know what? I, I did hear that. With the, this little town in Colorado, that their whole police department just quit. Right. Oh, the, yeah. the chief signed. Uh, I don't remember the name of the town. It's like 700 to 1,200 people live yeah, in this town. Yeah, yeah, was... Depending on what time of year it is. And the entire police department has resigned. There's no cops. All, all four of them. And there was them. an article. Yeah, yeah all, all four, four of them. <laughs> and there was an article in the local paper, and some asshole actually said, who's going to enforce the, the, the codes? And, and, and <laughs> I swear to God. So, and, so there was the one time I did hear that's, somebody say that. That's funny. That's funny. And I yeah, wish yeah. somebody would have beaten them in the street for saying that. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. What about my codes? <laughs> yeah. And so what I and, and so what I tell people is that like, have you have you murdered somebody? No, of course not. Now, is the reason you have not murdered somebody because it's illegal or because you know it's immoral and wrong? <laughs> Right, and and hopefully you know, it's the latter for most people. Right, that was and, the argument that Ron Paul made. He said uh, in front of Congress, he said, "If they made heroin legal tomorrow, would you guys start using it?" And everybody's <laughs> like, "Well, well, no. That that would that's preposterous. That's ridiculous." And he goes, "That's my point, because right. what you're talking about is is the uh, the different kind of law, natural law, right. you know, malum in se. That law is has existed forever. We don't need codification for that. You know, you you." You assume that system of law in the dark alley when the guy pulls a knife on you. Mm. Mm -hmm. But you well, know. what are the police going to do in that situation anyway? They're going to come write a report over your dead yeah. body and call the coroner, <laughs> man. They're not there to save right. you from the guy with the knife. Yeah, they're crime reporters. People equate crime reporters police with that. safety, <laughs> and and there's no there's no correlation between. Police and safety—they they don't keep you safe. They come when the shit is done. Well, well I, uh, right. And sometimes they get write a report about it, and then they maybe try to go find the guy that killed you. Maybe not. You know, maybe yeah. not. It depends on how many times that happened that week, and how many donut shops there are in the neighborhood <laughs> to stop at. Well, I I think that I think the ju the justification, at least for the more intellectual statist. Uh, usually goes beyond that, and it's well, well, no, it's having them there keeps crime lower mm. um, because yeah, of their the presence. presence. And the in, in, in some <laughs> cases, this does have an effect. Unfortunately, you know, as you as as is seen over and over and over again, when any report comes out about what's going on across the country, is when you combine that type of policing with ridiculous gun laws and weapons laws in general well then no nobody's getting still nobody's getting protected because nobody gives a rat's ass about the presence because they have more guns than the cops do and they know nobody else does so it, their best interests the people who want these things always work against each other which is exactly what the political class wants them to do which is why it's so you know to us, it's so mind-boggling, but to them, it just goes right over their head that, you know, the the fact that both sides of the of the of the system that they think are so different, it's it's not like a recent occurrence that they've become more of the same. They've always been the same. They've just been better at theatrics in the past. Um, now they don't actually have to be anymore because people are so dumb. They just <laughs> they're so they they are so dumbed down that they don't recognize. That this, you know, oh yes, they, they're there to protect you. Okay, but what if Why? I can't get yeah. there, and now I'm not allowed to protect myself? Well, you're more danger to your, like they then they'll justify everything. Well, you're more of a danger to yourself with that. Well, no, I get, let me let me make that decision, please. <laughs> okay, <laughs> if, if if somebody is breaking into my house, I can guarantee you one thing: I'm not going to shoot my own dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oops! I shot my... or, or your own kid, or my own kid, or yeah. I'm not going to throw a flash bang into <laughs> my kid's room or any of those things. Um, yeah. and, and and that's the mindset that people are going off of. They they have been neutered to the point by the state that they have to have the the police force to to protect them because now you can't. You know, where, like where you guys live, and you can't carry a gun, you can't carry this, you can't do that, the other, and that's the only thing. But then again, the state says, yeah, but we also don't have any duty to respond when you do call. So, okay. Yep. Well, exactly. There's that. Mm -hmm. You know, and that that's a non sequitur. That doesn't make any sense at all. You know, you, you're taking away the ability for people to just handle things, that, the natural law that I was talking about, to be able to handle it themselves. Mm -hmm. And say, you know what? Um, I might deal with this robber a little bit rough when he shows up, but if I can get away with it, I'll do it. Yeah. And that'll probably be the last robbery that goes goes down in the you know the streets of uh, you know Crapville this week because everybody else is going to go, man. <laughs> you can't get away with it. That that guy right there will kill you. Yeah. Right.
Well, but the, the, I was just going to say that that's also part of the twisted thinking because I just I saw that headline come up again today, and I don't know. I remember there there was an article a year or two about this, and I don't know if somebody was just sharing that old one around again or if it was a new one about somebody in the hu- in the Huff Post, I think, writing about the unfairness of self defense because the person doesn't get a trial. And yeah, was, you're depriving them of their ability to yeah. get a, a trial. I'm yeah. like, like, <laughs> like that's how that is how twisted the thinking has gotten for these people. And the, and and I'm sure at the top of that whole thing, it's that's by design. But the people that follow along and nod their heads and go, oh, "That makes perfect sense." It's like, what? No, 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 no. You break into my house and you threaten my ch- my children, my dogs, uh, just my property in general like that you know you break into my house with malicious intent i am going to take care of you and i don't give a rat's ass about your trial i'm sorry (laughs) if i did that if i did that to you i would expect to be shot which is why no which is why besides the fact that i'm really not big on stealing that even if i was i would think twice about doing it if i knew the other person was going to have the very good chance of being armed on the other side but they don't think like this. They just go, oh, yeah, no, 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 rights, people's rights. Everybody has rights. <laughs> yeah, but how, they're, they're, they're completely misinterpreting the, the, the definition of rights, you know? You keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. <laughs> I, was, I was talking to um, some of my uh, the homeschooling uh, mothers <laughs> that I hang oh, out oh, with. Oh, say it ain't so. <laughs> and, uh, and I was talking about the Cheryl Yurkowski uh, incident yes. with them. And... Um, and what was amazing was, um, I, you know, I said the whole thing, and then at the end, they said, um, no, I think you're not telling me the whole story. I think there's more to the story. As if, as if you know, Sh- Cheryl must have done something to deserve that, which is the essence of victim blaming, which is so, so tragic, you know? It's like, it's like you, have, you have an obvious power differential, right? And there's obviously one person, not only with authority, but, you know, with, with a gun and, and, and with the, you know, legal right to use force, d- deadly force if necessary. And then the victim, the person with the le- least amount of power and authority gets, like, wounded and, you know, just bruised and beat up. <laughs> and you still blame the victim. And you still prosecute the victim. And you still try to imprison the victim. And it's still her fault. Like, what? <laughs> it's amazing. Stockholm Syndrome in its, in its purest form. You know, we had, uh, when we had Virgil Badugo on, like, was it several weeks ago? Yeah. We asked him about, the, the, because we love the app, Cell 411 app. If anybody doesn't have it, you need to have it, get it, just do it. You can thank me later. <laughs> and we asked him specifically, what do you, you, you do realize that the police are going to see this as an affront to their monopoly on that service. And he said, well, we haven't seen a lot of that yet, but it could happen, but we can deal with it. And what was it, like a week later? I, I don't know uh, if you guys have been It was a matter of this. days after the podcast. <clears throat> the cops yeah. get a hold of it, and they're, they're trolling, and they're giving negative reviews on the yeah. Google Play Ooh. Store, and they're, they're threatening, and they're, they're going in under false names and saying, oh, you're going to get somebody killed. That and people are talking about, I'm going to download the app just so I can get the notification and show up and help the police. Yeah, there was yeah, that too. You know, it's just. Well, it's, I mean, it's unfortunately, it's, it's expected because the same thing happened with Waze. Yeah, they did year. it with Waze. Yeah. They're still doing it. They're, they're actually trying to get rid of the, the part of Waze where you can notify that there's a speed trap. Because mm-hmm. there are officers claiming that that makes them unsafe. If you, if you, you know, if I drive by and there's a guy sitting behind an oak tree, like Roscoe P. Coltrane, waiting <laughs> to find a victim going a few miles over the limit, and I, and I put that on my way so other people aren't victimized by this guy, I'm putting out a notification of where he is so people can come and attack him. That's yeah. their mentality, and that's the argument they're making well, no. to try and get rid of that feature. Oh, yeah. They, <laughs> they, they make the most extreme, almost lifeboat scenario situations to throw out there for the emotional appeals to go our lives, you know, just like everything else. 
we were afraid for our lives. I felt like I was in danger. You know, the the, the defense every cop is 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 trained to give as soon as they shoot somebody. The first response. I thought, I, first I, thought response. Had, I thought he had a gun. Well, yeah, no, it just I was I was in, I was afraid for my life. That's all they have to say these days. And whether it's true or not, that's all they have to say, and they'll get investigated, which means they'll be on paid leave until everything gets sorted out. And more often than not, it's somehow ruled justified. Sure. You know, I mean, sure. well, I think they're, they, I think that they really are telling the truth. They are afraid for their lives because they're all a bunch of well, wusses. They should be, but you know, I mean, <laughs> but again, they they take the 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 extreme examples that you know, are rare occurrences and make it out, you know, like I remember, was it last year? It was last year when the, when the guy, yeah, when the guy came up from, uh, or a year and a half ago now, when the guy came up from D.C. up to up to the Bronx and and not and whacked those two cops in the back of their car. Um, yeah. and, and that was uh, a big deal where, you know, everybody freaked out and, they, and, and, the, and the, the revamp talk of the war on cops got started again. And it was funny because every time they tried to trumpet out that war on cops, there's enough people now with immediately with facts to go, well, no, let's see how many people have been killed by cops this year, how many cops have been killed, you know, and then and then they tried and then they tried to they tried to mess with that by they tried to say, no, this is the number of officer deaths. And then you look into it. It's like, well, no, no, those oh. are all suicides. Well, no, 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 yeah. not, not even. Mo- the, well, the deaths, most of them were because I think suicides were actually kept out of it because they, they couldn't fudge that one too much. But the a majority of them were car accidents. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and not even related to like, uh, you know, a chase yeah. or something. Yep. No, <laughs> car, no, no, no. Just hey, like <laughs> car crashes and heart attacks. And then the other and then. And then the other thing that is mentioned yep. is uh, the police dogs, right? They're they're men- they're listed yep. with the cops. Yep, they're, <laughs> they're treated officer down. As a, hu- as a human being. Yeah. Which is- Every time I think I think of half baked with the co- with the with the horse when he gets busted for for killing the horse for the diabetic horse and everybody freaks out. But that's what it is. It's like that's what the- I mean. Yeah. Hey, I love animals, but guess what? You're going to tr- you're going to charge somebody for the same crime as killing a human being as for killing a, a, an animal just because it's been dubbed a police animal. Well, that's only if you kill or harm a police dog. But if they kill your dog, well, no, exa- of course the double standard. <laughs> hey, dog lives matter. <laughs> uh, only only, poli- only police dog lives matter apparently. To these blue guys. dog lives blue, matter. Blue dog. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Specify the color. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you look at the numbers, and I think the averages are uh, people killed by cops in the U.S. every year are between 14, what? 1,500? Yeah, between 12 and 1,500 a year. Cops killed average about 30. Let's call it, let's round it up and w- let's just go to 50. But most of those are done in execution of these no knock raids. They're drug, uh, uh, drug raids, war on, war on drugs type stuff. These are victimless crimes anyway. They're going in and putting themselves in that situation. And my my take has always been, okay, I have an idea. Stop doing that. Well, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, and if the dude with a quarter, a little quarter bag in his pocket, when he gets pulled over and he's got a prior, and he he is not going back to jail, okay. If if he doesn't have that threat of going back to jail, do you think that when that cop pulls him over for a tail light out? And walks up to the window. Is he going to stick a Glock in his face and pull the trigger? No, no. He's oh. doing that because he's being threatened to be abducted. Well, sure. So you could take that thirty and drive it down to zero. <laughs> War on cops fixed. There you go. Yeah. Well, exactly. I mean, because to go back to the thing you were talking about with with the situation with Cheryl, it it, it actually doesn't really matter if there is more to the story no it doesn't (laughs) because the fact that they were in her home exactly just because someone called about yelling yeah all right so let let, let me elaborate there so she's like she's like well how did they get in because they were sleeping that's what she said right she was sleeping she was she was woken up by by her daughter crying well, no, she was. She had been fighting with Jesse, and she, and then she walked away from him to go to bed, and then the the cops only showed up like less than an hour later, I think. So it was just, but it was still a matter of she came out of her room to find the cops touching her daughter, which is still again, you walk out of your bedroom, you're in your course, yeah. home, you have gotten into an argument with. It doesn't matter, like you got into an argument and you walked away from it. 
It, you weren't like, you know, there was no physical battle going on or anything. You walked away from that argument and went to your room. You come Actually, out. the yelling on on the yelling that the neighbor reported was him on the phone. Yes. No, exactly. It, he didn't even know she was there. No, she had actually gone home and gone to bed, and he didn't know that she was there. Yeah. So he was pissed off because he didn't know where she was. So he's on the phone yelling. No, I know, I know, I know, I know. But exactly, that's what I'm saying. But I know that. But I'm saying she. No matter what, she comes out of her room, and there is now somebody she doesn't know. Doesn't she's got a fancy costume on? Who cares? Someone she doesn't know touching her daughter. I probably would have, I wouldn't even bother to ask a question. I just would have punched, like, immediately. I just would have, I just would have launched myself at the person, you know? So, like, again, it, it doesn't matter. Like, that's the thing in, in these situations that really pisses me off because it doesn't matter if there's more to the situation. It doesn't right. matter if there was something. At that moment, yeah. they, were, they were invading somebody else's house on some sure. pretense of protecting and serving, which maybe in Canada the Supreme Court hasn't declared that it's not their job, but you know it's the same everywhere if it ever was to begin with, that it's not to protect. So just because they just they invaded somebody's home, once you do that, I'm sorry, all bets are off. So yeah, if this yeah, were yeah. if there, if we were on our show right now, I would give a prescriptive uh, uh, on exactly how to deal with home invaders no matter what costume they're wearing but since i'm not on our show oh, you can go, I won't go, go do for that. it oh, go for it i'll, I'll be more than happy <clears throat> to put that out <laughs> <laughs> okay uh aim high because some people wear body <laughs> armor <laughs> nice. and do, do you think that that makes me happy to have to go out in public and put my name behind having to say something no, like that no it not. doesn't it's ridiculous you know but it's it's terrible but i look at every time i see something that, hey, that happened to people like her it's infuriating just an fyi there was a guy when when they had me in the rankin county jail in mississippi there was a guy across from me in the cell across from me who was in there because he had a police uniform and was going around to people's homes as a police officer, hmm. <laughs> knocking on the door, gaining entry and compliance Ooh. with the police yeah. uniform. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then he would handcuff them, beat them, and steal all their stuff. Wow. That was what he was in jail for. Yep. Hmm. So w when you see this person in your home, just because they have the costume on, uh, does that mean they're a cop? They, if they have no reason or business to be there, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, you know, right, right. And, <laughs> and unfortunately, like with this particular situation, because I've I've also dealt with people that who say they oh they feel bad that it happened to her, but you know if she if she just would have listened, it's like no, she was in that like it was it, the, or no oh, no that the, that's the other guy. I'm sorry that um well they have to do this because it was called because they were they were called to protect her because somebody thought her somebody thought uh, her husband was going to do something to her well then and, why the hell didn't they protect her well ex well number one yeah that's that's, <laughs> that's the first problem but even beyond that it's like okay yes i understand that in certain situations the abuser makes it so the, the the person being abused can't reach out and call the cops so unless somebody else does it there it like like yes, I get that that happens. Horrible situation, but be because you folks want to make that go away, the only thing you could do is is beg for these blanket laws that affect everybody. So even where you have a situation where there's a dis domestic dispute, but it's just an argument, or a in this situation even worse, an argument that took place earlier and then confusion after the place in fact about the argument where nobody knew where anybody was and 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 and, and a drunken person was yelling on his phone and that <laughs> and he he was the one who was yelling on his phone and she was the one who got her ass kicked.
hey, man, are you okay? They'd have found me on my back deck drinking a beer saying, yeah, man, I'm cool. <laughs> and, yeah. and end of story. But instead, I end up going to jail, thrown naked on concrete floor with four other naked guys for five days, starved the whole time I was in there, and then ran through a kangaroo court where I have a suspended sentence hanging over me for two years. Never in my life have I had a criminal record. Now I have one. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. When the, yeah. the neighbors could have just come over and, you know, knocked on the door and said, hey, man, uh, here yelling. Is everything OK? And, and you and can the go. Worst I'm, part yeah, about I'm just it, watching Mad Max. I've it's always good. told people, <laughs> my family included, that I have no contact with anymore, by the way, because they don't understand this. If you ever want to make a situation worse, call the police. I don't care how bad you think it is. If you think it's as bad as it possibly can get and you want to see it get worse, call the police. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think uh, another thing I'd like to point out is, you know, when we talk about anarchy to people, they kind of get confused and muddled in the brain, you know, because they say, well, what about in this situation? What would you do in this situation? What would you do? No, it's not about that. Simmer it down and distill it to the basic idea, which is uh, you act and claim responsibility for your actions. That's all I ask of you. That's it. You don't have to know economics. You don't have to know how business is going to work. You don't have to know <laughs> these, these hypothetical scenarios and donut problems. No. <laughs> act and claim responsibility for your actions. That's all I ask of any person including, of course, <laughs> all government agents, right? And if they did that, they would not act the way they act, right? Because, you know, with or without a costume, you know, we all, we all must adhere to the same moral, universal, you know, universal moral laws, right? And, and I think that's, that's a helpful way to, to distill it, that just, just act the way that you would if you had 100% accountability and responsibility for everything that you do. That's well, it. and when you leave people alone, they generally do that. You, you avoid right. a lot of the problems that, that we're talking about to begin with that we need these cops to show up to deal with, yeah. you know, that's called spontaneous order, you know. Right. right. Yeah. But most, most people uh, fear that more than anything else. Was they, it by, uh, somewhere from the, back in the past who wrote about it. What, <laughs> what's that? Yeah, I think so. Um, no, I was, I was saying most people fear, fear the idea of spontaneous order. They can't, they can't wrap their head around the fact that, that things will – because in their mind, it's like, you, you're, oh, that's utopian thinking. Things will just fall into place. No, that's just kind of the way things work. If you let things mature and blossom and, and do whatever and just not interfere, just literally let nature take its course in a lot of situations, it's a lot better. Um, but they, you know, they, they don't want to, they, they, so they, fe they fear that. But the, the thing with the, you know, just laws in general, people, they, they, they don't, you know, they, you talk about the, the, them, not even understanding, you know, anarchy in general, but they fear having the cops taken away. It's like, well, no. I mean, you're talking about cell cell four one one. Like, that's a great thing for people like us, but unfortunately, the majority of the people that call the cops are people that would still never use that right now, because mm -hmm. they're just the busybodies right. that think they should do think something has to be done, but they won't do it themselves. They'll call somebody else with guns to do it. Um, you know, but but cell four one one is a great example of what could be done, even right now alongside of cops. And then you have stuff like you know Dale Brown and threat management in Detroit. And I mean they're actually bigger than Detroit, yeah. but, but he's the the focus of what's going on there. And you know right now you have these options, and what do they, what do they do? They're all about defense. They have nothing to do with offense, you know. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it, it's de-escalation. Exactly. Mm -hmm. it, well, that's what you know. That Danilo, that's what you were saying before about you know if you go to your neighbor's house, if you see even if you see something going on, are you gonna jump right in and like start punching people or trying to shoot people? <laughs> no, you're. If it's somebody, especially if it's somebody you know, you're you're gonna try to de-escalate it. Which, as Dale <laughs> Brown pointed out, I've heard him say it in multiple interviews now that like. That's what he figured out in the 20-plus years he's been in the business. He started out all gung-ho and thinking, I right, need to have the biggest right. and baddest guns because that's what yeah. makes the most sense to him because he came from military background, I think, right? So, I think so. Yeah. So it's, that's what you're trained for. Okay, well, that's what I got to do. And he figured it out over there. It's like, no, no, no. De-escalation and just using your head a hell of a lot more than you even think about using your gun can be so much more effective and 
they have like a proven model, but still so many people just like, oh, it could never work. It could never work. Well, I think it does work for him, man. And in over two decades, there's never been an officer killed and mm -hmm. they've never killed anybody mm -hmm. in over 20 years. And it, they take more of a psychological approach than a physical approach. Yeah, well, exactly. And it's proven. Yeah. You yeah. can't deny 20 whatever years of results. Oh. There's no crime where they're at. Anywhere they are, the crime's gone, yeah, and they don't hurt people, and they don't get hurt. <laughs> yeah. How can you beat that, right? Well, yeah. And, and we've, we've, we've been in a lot of fights over the years because, well, let's face it, we've been stupid for most of our lives. Um, True story. <laughs> but after, after being in a lot of fights, personally, one thing that I do understand is when I, I see uh, two people, and we understand that the most dangerous situation you can look at is a domestic dispute. When you have two people like that who are, are in that, that, that passionate argument, you just need to physically separate them. That's de-escalation. Just get them away from each other. That doesn't require somebody showing up and pepper spraying everybody or shooting a dog or pointing a gun at you or anything else. It's just like, hey, look, you're really upset right now. Let's come step over here and, you know, take a breath. Let's go down to the store, grab a Coke. That's 90% of everything you're ever going to run into in life. That, and there's also the just leave it alone for a minute. You know, we were we were down on the beach yesterday, mm. door knocking some some music venues while I'm I'm down here in Florida, and there's some drunk guy running around without a shirt on, screaming at the top of his lungs, "I need a cop! Somebody stole my stuff!" And <laughs> you know, over the course of 30 minutes, we saw this guy like eight times, and every time we saw him, he was chasing down some other random person that he didn't know, offering him money if he would go beat up this person that stole his stuff, and <laughs> it was just crazy, man. But every time we saw him, we looked at each other, and Mary could be like, hey, let's steer clear of this guy. He's nuts, you know, and we just avoided him, you know. Now, had we gotten into a conversation with this guy the way he was there's a chance we could have ended up in a fight with him i mean he was just all worked up and pissed off and talking about somebody's leaving here in a body bag and all this off the wall stuff we just left the guy alone and <laughs> over the course of probably close to an hour we saw this guy repeatedly and every time we saw him he was just running around doing his crazy routine and we had nothing to do with him he didn't hurt anybody. He was annoying, yeah. but he didn't hurt anybody. You just walk and away. We just we just steered clear of him. You know, sometimes you just leave something alone. <laughs> that kind of reminds me of uh, of politicians, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just oh, just crazy people trying trying to control control others, and fundamentally they have no power if nobody pays attention. <laughs> and right. that's the that's whole right. idea. And, that, and that's ignore the whole, them and they go away. And that's the whole idea of stating it's like, no, we got to assassinate the president. We got to put, no, you don't actually. <laughs> you yeah, just, just ignore him. Stop. He's good. So, stop go home, stop Obama. Attending. You're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe a straitjacket, maybe a padded room. And that's about it. You know, they don't hurt anybody. You, right. know? you know, you know, let them or, come, off their, come off their meds. They'll be all right in the morning. It's okay. You don't have to shoot them. <laughs> but it, all I was going to say is it, it's it's funny. It ties into a lot of the stuff that we talk about in self-defense training is that the first choice is always avoidance, no matter what it is. If there is one person who is being violent, if everyone else will have the courage to run away, you know, mm -hmm. even, you know, if, if I'm wearing a gun, which I always am, and somebody's doing something, I'm running over here. I'm gone, man. I'm headed for the hills. And Actually, if everybody that, does that, you've got one crazy guy who's angry with a knife standing in a room by himself, <laughs> you know, looking around going, fuck, what just happened? That, that, that actually reminds me of a, of a, of a uh, misconception of um, gun owners is that, is that, you know, I, I hear that they, they say, you people who have guns, you're just asking for trouble. You, you go into a situation and you know that you can handle it because you have a gun, so you're just going to going to dangerous places because Absolutely you want to fight because you want to fight <laughs> and it's it's just amazing that people think no, like that like <laughs> they do and, and what they don't understand and this is I'm sorry i'm a little bit passionate about this but <laughs> when you carry a gun you have a responsibility not yep. to use it to run right. away because right. now if you get into a fight like yesterday with this crazy guy i was wearing a gun we both had guns on yeah. us i may i may have been wearing two <laughs> but <laughs> I, now you have a responsibility 
to run away because if you get into a fight, now you've just brought a gun to a mm. fight. Yep. You just right. turned it into a gunfight. You can't do that. If that guy gets off one lucky overhand right in the jaw and I drop on the ground in the parking lot, he sees my gun, what have I just done? You can't do that. Yep. It doesn't work that way. So it's, a, it's exactly the I opposite. had a good friend that I grew up with that was murdered with his own gun in a bar in uh, Columbus, Mississippi, several Ooh. years back. Yep. And he didn't do anything. Uh, there was no fight. It was it, The guy that, that killed him had actually started a brawl at another bar. And he it was like the whole place, man. Brawl, the cops were called, and he fled. And while he was driving away from that place, he ran over a pedestrian. So the cops are now looking for this guy for the brawl, and now the hit and run mm -hmm. where he nearly killed a pedestrian, and he parked at the hotel he was staying at, and rather than go in his room, he ran around the corner to this little pub where my friend was sitting at a stool right inside the door, mm -hmm. and he had a concealed carry and, and a holster, and um, the guy came in and literally came in the door looking for somebody to jump and took my friend off of the bar stool. And as he tackled him off the stool, he felt the gun, uh -huh. and he took it out of my friend's holster and shot him in the head several times. Wow. And, and the guy that was with him tried to intervene and, and tackle him, and he killed that guy. Hmm. And another okay. friend of mine who happened to be working the bar dove over the bar, missed him, landed on, on his hands and knees on the floor, and the guy put the gun to his head. And while my friend begged for his life, he pulled the trigger but was out of bullets. Because he had Ooh. already put them all on the other two guys, and he drops a gun and walks outside and sits down. But my friend was killed with his own gun, hmm. you know. So whenever you, if when you carry a gun, whatever fight there is is a gunfight because you brought the gun. Yep. Mm -hmm. You have it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always a gunfight. And you know, yesterday that guy, he was no threat to me. I'm pretty sure either one of us could have kicked that guy's ass, and surely the both of us could have. But we were both carrying guns, and all we wanted to do was stay away from him. So yeah. the, 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 the thought that gun owners, and I've been carrying for years, he's been carrying for a lot more years, that gun owners want a confrontation, they want an opportunity to use their guns is pretty far from the truth, man. It's yeah. hand to avoid trouble. Avoidance is your friend. Yeah. If, you, if, if, if I shoot you, you made me do it. You, you forced me to do it, and I didn't want to, but you made me. You know, and I hope that I never have to do that. I'm willing to. Yeah, and usually, going back, people are usually peaceable people in public. You know, that, that is what anarchy is, is, is this society that we live in. We, it's in our own best interest to, to be peaceful towards each other. But you get mm -hmm. that one outlier, like the drunks and the, you know, the dope heads and the whatnots, uh, leaving the cops out of it. But <laughs> what I've always taught, because I teach, uh, you know, armed self-defense and, and stuff, what I've always taught is that if you're, if you're at the point to where your gun is coming out, your tactics have failed. Yeah. You know, everything running up to that has failed because you <laughs> should have had awareness. You should, you know, know what your surroundings are. If you escape see somebody, plan. you have to have an escape plan, you know. Sit with sit where you face the door. Sit close to yeah. an exit in a restaurant. All of these things that aren't paranoia. They're just yeah, just in case. And if anything goes down, run away, get away from it, and there you go. <clears throat> now you don't have to worry about you know what caliber do I need or what technique of aikido am I going to use if somebody come. No man, <laughs> if somebody's acting weird, just run away. Right. Done. <laughs> but you got against aikido. I like aikido. <laughs> man. I'm just saying. If they're that close, your tactics have failed. I think it comes also back to to having more responsibility for your actions, you know, as uh, regular human beings, whereas as people in a positions of power and authority um, do not, right? And, and they claim they are above those uh, universal laws of morality. And so, you know, a murder for them is not a murder for us, right? Uh, and so they uh, they can act with immunity in those situations, which is, uh, which is so unfortunate, you know, how, how, uh, people still are clouded by the idea of, uh, of authority and that, that, um, you know, they have the right to enforce these, you know, myriad <laughs> laws that, uh, that really truly do enslave people. But, um, you know, like, like just, you know, just talking about moving violations, you know, 
stop stop uh, you know on the on the highway for <laughs> you know whatever <laughs> 10 miles over 20 miles over um you know victimless crime right <laughs> he didn't hurt anybody um and uh and and, and then, you know and, and the fact that people don't understand that you know when you are pulled over by an officer that is a death threat right there right right when he turns on the lights that is a death threat you must comply or as as you said Mary there will be escalation right until you do comply well now you just had somebody bring a gun into into a situation where there was there was nothing right. wrong initiated conflict no, yeah there was a guy wasn't wearing his seatbelt when he pulled into the convenience store yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and the irony of the motorcycle cop pulling people over for no seatbelt, that's not <laughs> lost on me either. By I've the way. told that uh, to people, but they don't see the irony. It's amazing. <laughs> They're like, no, he's, he's special. He's special. <laughs> yeah, right. But you just took somebody who's peaceable, peaceably traveling from point A to point B, and you, you forcibly stopped them, and you brought a gun into it, and you've given the gun to somebody who really can escalate, and that's the only tool they have in the toolbox is escalation. Right. You know, that's what they do. The the force compliance that they teach to officers, the way that they 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 get compliance through intimidation, that's taught from the very beginning of police academy. Mm -hmm. uh, you're just asking for more of what you're getting. Yeah. And then when some people get tired of that, they say, "Oh, there's a war on cops." I, I think there I think there's some people that that join um, law enforcement that do f for good intentions, right? You know, they want order uh -huh. they want to truly protect and serve and then there are also those people that are just attracted to positions of power and they just want to dominate and subjugate other people sure. and and it's so unfortunate that you know the same exact reason why you know there is no such thing as a good politician there is no such thing as a good police officer because you are already in a power uh, you know differential situation master slave type thing and uh, and there there is no amount of of uh, authority you know coercive authority that is legitimate whatsoever <laughs> i appreciate you saying that because i've been saying that for a long time and i get a lot of heat for it i've lost friends over saying that yep. but my point is that there are no good cops by definition you can't be because well, yeah at, when you're a cop you have to enforce the bad laws and if you are enforcing a bad law against peaceable people by proxy that makes you a bad person yeah well seems pretty simple to me well I've See, I, I well, I, I agree to accept. I, I usually put it in a slightly different terms, though, because I, 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 I maybe because it makes it easier for people to, to digest. Um, you know, I mean, good, bad, such subject, uh, subjective words anyway. But I, I think there, there's no good cops because the position is just the position itself is essentially immoral. What they do uh, and the processes they go through, but people confuse the good characteristics of the individual, the people that Danilo was describing, you know, because I'm sure, I mean, I remember looking up the statistics a while ago when I was, when I was working on something and it still says that there's only all this, all the information you can find still says there's only one, about 1.1 1 .1 million law enforcement officers in the United States. 1.1. 1 .1. That seems low, doesn't it? For 330 million people. Like with people the way they want cops everywhere and stuff like that. Like mm. when you talk about just having to stop paying attention to these people, like <laughs> just think about that. Yeah. For I mean, every one, there's three hundred and thirty other people standing around just so looking exactly. at them going, No. So but no. No, you don't even need all three hundred and thirty of them. You don't even need a hundred and sixty a hundred and sixty of them. Hundred and sixty five of them, whatever. You need, you know, maybe seventy five of them. That's it. Game over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and don't 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 read me wrong. And I know a lot of people listen to this, so don't read me wrong. I'm not saying that the cop is not a good person. Well, no, that's what I'm I was saying. saying. That he's not a good cop. Yeah. No, that, that's as I was saying. That's what that's the distinction. Well, okay. So then we are on the same page because that's the distinction I I try to make to people. I try to say no. You're you're when you say when you say good, you're thinking of like you know. Um, you know, people that I know, cause I have cops in my family. I have cops. I married into I, a I cop do, family. I do too. Yeah. I yep. married, I married into a cop family, you know, like, so people uh, are a little, uh, edgy about these conversations, but when I bring it up, I'm like, well, no, see you, no matter, it doesn't matter that you're thinking about them as, you know, your, 
your friend or your uncle or your dad or your sister or whatever, like when you hear good, that's all you think about. No, this is so-and-so. Okay, yeah, great. But that's not their job. There's no good cops as the job. The whole process, the whole thing is Exactly. Is that's my point. It's, it's the institution. Yeah. Thank right. you. Thank you. That's it. That's yeah. what it yeah. If, if Uncle Jesse is throwing a guy in a cage for having a dime bag in his pocket, he's a bad cop. Yeah. He may be a great uncle, you know, a fantastic person out, you know, at, at home, but that's it. So that, that's and all he, I'm and saying. And he, he may even do other things that are praiseworthy while on the job, but almost all of them don't involve him actually having to have been on the job to do so, just being a decent human being. Right. He could have done it. So, again, <laughs> has nothing to do with being a cop. Like, when they always talk about the hero cops that save people, it's like, okay, anybody could have done that. The badge right. <laughs> and the uniform have nothing. They're not specially trained to do that stuff any more than anybody else who wants to take rescue courses and stuff like that and has a brain and can think logically and, you know, like, no, sorry. <laughs> Um, it's not a problem, you know, like anybody could. So the, you, they want to put the, the badge in the uniform. They want to attach it to that. So people go, oh, the heroes, right. the heroes. Okay, yeah, it may, have, even if it is a so, heroic act, the uniform had nothing to do with it. The job had right. nothing so, to do with it. When, right. when I see a YouTube video where the cop buys the poor black kid a Happy Meal or stops in the street to play basketball with some disenfranchised youths <laughs> uh, okay, yeah and, that's and he, not part of the job no exactly and he's and, being a decent person exactly right? and it's great it's that's great that, that he's, we do well okay the basketball is great that he's a decent person the buying mcdonald's he's buying it with stolen money so f you buddy you're not that great <laughs> of a fucking guy i'm sorry right. touche and, 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 <laughs> and yet the other the other aspect about it is that people associate um, law enforcement with security Right. And and they're they're kind of pretty separate. You know, it's like, sure, currently law enforcement has kind of a monopoly on, um, you know, it, only actually only enforces the law. And they, they, they claim they claim to also do security. But but that's really a farce. You know, that's that's an illusion. Um, and, and and so people, you know, that you have to I, I, I like to point out that, you know, there are actually I, I think there are like um, one third. Uh, compared to security and uh, and uh, you know you know private security and law enforcement, there's like one third are law enforcement and two thirds are are private security in the United States. Yet you don't see videos of private security, you know, breaking people's arms, tasing them to death, or tasing pregnant ladies, <laughs> you know, shooting dogs. You know, you don't see that. <laughs> Why is that? I, I'll tell you where I do see that. And there's a lot of venues that I play music at that the security i have seen them do those kind of things but in those instances it's not a private security company it's the off-duty sheriff's department deputies nice yeah that's where i see that <laughs> yep. but here's here's a thought for you you talk about security and you talk about needing police to make you safe if if that's their job and they're doing that job why do so many people have to hire private security there was an article jackson mississippi where i live there's a construction company that's building uh, a multi-unit living facility, some apartment complex or something, and they've had so many the, – the crime's bad in Jackson. There's a lot of gang problems. There's a lot of carjackings and robberies, and these guys have come in and arm-robbed the construction workers on the job in the middle of the day. They're stealing wow. – appliances out of the new units and you know mm. they'll cut the copper off the ac units this this is a everyday thing so these this construction company has had to come out of their pocket and hire private armed security and get this shit the other night the guy is in his car where he you know he makes his rounds and he sits in the parking lot overnight to keep the stuff from getting stolen inside this guy comes up and puts a gun through the window and tries to arm rob the security officer. Oh, man. The security nice. officer actually shot him oh, or, or beat him up or something. So, you know, good guy won. But hmm. the, here's the concept. The police are here to protect us, but all of these places where I play and down to construction workers just trying to do a job and build an apartment building – they have to pay out of their pocket to hire a private company to protect them. Why would they have to do that 
if the police are here to protect us and they're already <laughs> getting our money by threat of violence, mm -hmm. well, why yeah. the fuck are we having to pay this private company, man? That's what they're getting paid for, right? Well, <laughs> well, again, but that also goes back to you can say, well, all right, because, you know, like the, like the conservatives like to do that, you know, they, they point to the Supreme Court decision and say, well, they said they didn't have to. Well, yeah, of course, they don't they don't have to protect you. Um, but. The, the bigger problem is, well, okay, yeah, it it's definitely sucks that you have to pay, but, I mean, I'd prefer to have to pay, but they also they also usually, in the, in most cases at least, especially around here, they, they hamstring all the private companies. They're not allowed, you know, there's only so much they're allowed to do. Even if they're allowed to be armed, you still don't get to do, you still have to be, you know, you're still even more scrutinized than a cop will ever be. And again, mm -hmm. you, you know, you're paying extra, so you're paying for crappy service that's not helping you. And then you, then you, and the only other option you have is to pay for the limited amount of companies, one of the limited amount of companies that can actually afford to jump through the stupid legal hoops and the and the regulations and all the other bullshit to get to to be able to have one of these companies, and then they're hamstrung by what the police will let them do. And that's it. those are your options. And that's and that's the free market. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's free market. This is capitalism. why free market doesn't work. That doesn't yeah, work. Free market and capitalism fails because it doesn't work. <laughs> that that is what that yeah exa exactly. <laughs> exactly. Housing housing crisis was because of free market. <laughs> yeah, but that's yeah. the thought. So, but uh, but yes, private private banks giving out those bad loans. They yeah. should have known better, right? Yeah. Wait, <laughs> what? Anybody? Bueller? What? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, maybe we should uh, uh, wrap it up and uh, and deliver your your final closing remarks, Merrick and uh, and Jonathan. Thanks a lot for coming on. Really appreciate it. I love your show. Uh, I listen to it as well. And uh, yeah, keep doing, keep up the awesome work. Yeah, we we like doing it. We love your show too. We're always glad to be on. So appreciate the opportunity. Taxation is theft. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Well, no, it's uh, well, I mean, I, I joke about it all the time, but it is nice to have other people um, than Dave <laughs> every once in a while. Because I mean, Dave, Dave I, I, I mean, I say that, but I still talk to Dave regularly. Danilo stopped talking to me during the week anymore, so I, so this is the uh, only opportunity I get to talk to him. <laughs> Dave, I get enough of all during the week, um, but so, you know, and I, I, of course, I also listen to the Radical Logic podcast. Which, by the way, you haven't given me anything in a while. You guys falling behind again? Is everything all right? I We're working on something really big that's taken a lot of research, okay. but. It's no going to be worth the wait, I promise. No, yeah, hey, and with, plus, with him being in town, and we, yeah. there's just been a lot of moving parts. Yeah, he's been in Mississippi visiting me, going to court with me uh, in case I got thrown back into a cage, which almost happened. And now I'm down here in Florida. So we've been yeah, – it's, yeah. it's been crazy, man. No, it's been we – we are working on something that's going to be good. I yeah, we've got a good one, and then we've got Daniele Bellelli coming up as well. Uh, so we're working up to that one. Awesome. Did, you, did you interview him yet? Like, no, not yet. We, we haven't had time well, between okay. my between my businesses and him and everything else. It's been crazy town, man. Okay. Yeah, looking forward to that. That guy's awesome. I, I, I yeah, we're his, we're looking forward to it. I love his podcast too, so I'm looking forward to that. But so yeah, it was it's it's good. It's great having. I mean, I always love having Merrick on, but it, it was great having you on too, Jonathan. This was a lot of fun. And uh, thank you, man. All right, you're 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 welcome back anytime too, of course. <laughs> awesome. So anybody wants to help out the Seeds of Liberty, you can do so um, through Bitcoin or Patreon. Uh, links are below. patreoncom slash Liberty to help us out. Dollar show is all we ask. Uh, if you find value in our content. Uh, please trade value for value. We are uh, capitalists in the end, and uh, monetary compensation is always appreciated and encouraged. Right? It's a free free market incentives. Right? If you like, if you like what we see, vote with your dollar or with your Bitcoin. <laughs> That'd yeah. be nice too. <laughs> Preferably. 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 Vote with your your Harriet Tubman dollar. Or that. <laughs> um, but uh, awesome conversation, gentlemen. Thank you very much. This is the uh, Seeds of Liberty podcast. Uh, wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Nice. Uh, Cell 411 is a free app for Android and iOS that replaces government-controlled 911. Cell 411 allows you to preset a group of friends or private organizations to show up in any emergency. Cell 411 is a nightmare for the state because it proves their so-called services aren't needed. Cell 411 has had thousands of installs, and of course it's covered by the Bitcot No Government License. Cell 411 because your friends won't shoot you when you're in trouble. Without the government, who would build the emergency services? You and Cell 411. Get it today at GetCell411.com. That's GetCell411.com.